So, uh, so we'll be taking you up from last week where David left off. That's uh, First Thessalonians chapter two and verse seventeen onwards. First Thessalonians chapter two and verse seventeen onwards. David completed up until verse sixteen. Um, so we'll take from seventeen. Uh, I think the things that uh, little, the, little, uh, some of the things that we are going to say today, uh, Tim already put a good groundwork last week on Sunday, explaining about the filling of the Holy Spirit uh, with examples and all those uh, things uh, last week on Sunday. So it will be a good groundwork. Uh, Tim has already put that. Uh, so it was the leading of the Holy Spirit leading into this week. So thank the Lord for that. So we'll get into verse 17. But since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time in person, not in heart, we endeavored the more eagerly more eagerly and with great desire to see you, you face to face because we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. Now, we're starting off with uh, Paul's desire. You know, Apostle Paul start, uh, came to Thessalonica, shared the gospel. Uh, the church got started there, but he had to go away quickly because of the persecution that is happening from the Jews uh, uh, and, the, and the other people there. So, one of the things that he wanted, or one of his desires was to come back to them because they didn't want, he didn't want them to think that, uh, he, that, he has that he has abandoned them, that he doesn't have any desire to come back to them. Uh, so he always wanted to come to them. Uh, and also uh, these are his spiritual children because uh, he was the one who shared the gospel and, and did the uh, initial gospel work there. But Paul, what one of the reasons why Paul could not make to that place again uh, for, for some time was because Satan hindered him in coming uh, to that place. Now, hindrances, uh, the, the basic meaning is hindrance would be uh, anything that would, uh, that would stop us or uh, anything that would stop us from growing in the Lord, doing things for the Lord. Um, and that's the basic meaning of hindrance. Uh, here, Paul was hindered by Satan. Now, when, if you're, if you, and we, we all know about it. We, when we read Acts, we see the Holy Spirit hindering, uh, in hindering uh, him from going to uh, some of the places in Asia. So we are looking in First Thessalonians two, uh, verse seventeen to three, uh, verse seventeen onwards. First Thessalonians two, verse seventeen onwards. And so we know Paul had the same experience uh, in Acts when he wanted to go into Asia, uh, minor Asia or countries in Asia, but the Holy Spirit hindered him from going into that place. Now here we see Satan hindering him from coming in, coming back to Thessalonica. Um, now, one of the things, I think we discussed this in our Sunday school a few months back, I think or a few weeks back or a few months back in our Sunday school on Sunday about hindrances. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that was shared on that day was, you know, some many of the times when we, uh, some of the things that we think that are coincidences are, are, are some of these hindrances that come into our lives, uh, you know, hindering us from doing the Lord's work, hindering us from growing in the Lord, hindering us from doing things for the Lord. Now, one of the things, uh, you know, so there are different types of hindrance, Holy Spirit hindering Paul, now here Satan hindering Paul. How do we know these are hindrances from Satan? Now, William MacDonald in his, uh, thing, in his commentary says, uh, the one one way that we can say for sure that these that some of these hindrances are from Satan is that when we live our life in the perfect will of God, when we are in the center of God's will. Now, when we live in that when we live uh, when our lives are aligned uh, to the to to the to God's will, anything that comes in opposition to that uh, are usually from uh, Satan uh, or hindrances from Satan. Now. Uh, one of the things that we say usually uh, in here and on Sunday is yielding to the Holy Spirit. You know how critical it is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, uh, Tim shared last uh, last Sunday about uh, you know uh, filling of the Holy Spirit. You know, when we are saved, when we accept the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit is given to us as a deposit guarantee. He is in us, and we know our salvation is secure. Uh, you know, once saved, we are saved, uh, and our salvation is secure. But Many often, you know, uh, one of the things that we miss out is uh, filling up the Holy Spirit or, 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 or living a life that is filled by the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, uh, or yielding to the, yielding our lives day to day to the Holy Spirit. Now, only when we live a life that is yielded to the Holy Spirit every day, can we, uh, you know, uh, can, we, uh, can we say or can we understand uh, 
uh, these are from Satan. Uh, the hindrances are from Satan or Holy Spirit. A person who is living uh, a life that is not yielded uh, to the Holy Spirit uh, every day would not be able to recognize uh, these hindrances. Now, Paul uh, understood this. He was able to he was able to understand this hindrance was from Satan. Now, one of the things that things that Paul did was, you know, it did not stop him from doing things. You know, yes, he was uh, he was stopped from coming personally or physically to the believers in Thessalonica, but he immediately sent this letter uh, from uh, uh, sent this letter to Thessalonica through uh, through his spiritual son Timothy. Now, that's the second one of the second things that. Uh, that came to my mind when I was reading this, you know, Paul, he knew, he understood this was a hindrance from Satan, but he did not give away or give up uh, on his mission. He was sure that, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, ultimately God would make him away. And we see that in Acts 20, ultimately he comes back to Thessalonica. God made him come back to Thessalonica. So one of the things is, one of the things is understanding uh, if the hindrances are from Satan. In order to understand that, uh, our lives have to be yielded to the Holy Spirit every day. Uh, only then we can understand uh, if the if these are hindrances from Satan. And once we understand, or once we know, once we know these are hindrances from Satan, uh, you know, one of the things that we can do is not give up. Uh, you know, not say or not be tired of it, not give up, but to stand firm in the Lord, because God is God will ultimately give us that uh, victory uh, uh, against these hindrances. And Paul was sure, and we can see that there. Uh, in, in when we come to uh, chapter three onwards, we see how Paul, even though he could not make it physically uh, there, he sent his send this letter uh, through Timothy. And the other one of the other things is, you know, even when uh, Satan thinks that he has hindered the work, even when Satan thinks that he has got the upper hand, God always worked things, uh, you know, for the better. You know. If it was not for Satan to hinder this, uh, hinder Paul, he would not be at, would have been able to write this letter uh, to these people. And and look how God created uh, Max, uh, uh, how God did a massive work in writing this letter. So we can be encouraged today in this 21st century, not just the believers in Thessalonica. So God always worked things for good. Uh, Satan is powerful than us, but he's not in control of everything. God controls everything. And he, and that's the sovereignty of God. You know, he works everything for good. Uh, uh, that's what the hindrances of Satan. And, you know, when we think in our own lives, you know, when we look in our own lives, you know, uh, one of the things we can think is, are we, um, we talk about this every, uh, every Thursday night, uh, are we living a life yielded to the Holy Spirit every day? You know, uh, some of the things that we think that are coincidences happening in our lives, are these really hindrances in our lives? And uh, one of the examples that we shared on Sunday school on that day was, you know, uh, you know, we have this interest of doing things for the Lord, waiting uh, or for or joining a meeting or doing something for the Lord, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there would be some kind of hindrance coming, you know. And then at that time, what would be our response to it? Are we uh, are we are we standing strong in the Lord, or are we just giving up and saying, oh? Uh, this is too much, or this is hindered, we can go forward. Paul is a great example. He did not stop there. He stood uh, in the might of the Lord. He stood there, and God eventually made him the way to come back to this one. Uh, you know, when we go to verse 19 and 24, what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. Now, one of, what is, when we think, what is our motivation in sharing the gospel? What is our motivation in uh, bringing the gospel to other people? What is our motivation in, in, in taking this pain uh, every week on Thursday night to come and pray for people to get saved? Pray for the strengthening of the believers. Uh, pray for the chapel or pray for other people. What is our motivation? Now, one of the motivations for Paul in, Paul in sharing the gospel was that he thought that was a crown of boasting. You know, the believers were a crown of boasting uh, when he stood before the Lord Jesus. Now, when we read, when we look at scripture, uh, we can see, you know, uh, different types of uh, crowns. You know, we have the crown of righteousness. We have the crown of life. We have the crown of glory. And these are all uh, uncorruptible crowns. And here Paul says another crown, a crown of boasting before the Lord Jesus. And he says it is the believers, you know. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus that is coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. 
And one of the things that we can say to uh, think into ourselves in our practical life is, uh, you know, what is our motivation in sharing the gospel? What is our motivation in taking pain uh, in crying out to the Lord uh, for the unsaved? What is our motivation in strength in trying to strengthening the believers? You know, uh, why should we take pain in bringing the gospel? Why should we would should we take pain in sharing the gospel? Paul's motivation was for it is a joy, a joy, a crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus uh, at his coming. Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. Uh, and, and we see that motivation there, verse 19 and 20. Uh, so those are some practical things that we think when we come before the Lord. Uh, uh, is my motivation in the right place? You know, uh, the pains that I take, the prayers that I pray, uh, is it for this? Uh, I want to see people get saved uh, because this is a crown of boasting, like Paul said, crown of boasting before the Lord when he comes. And when we come to chapter three, you know, uh, it says, therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were, were, we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone. And we sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ to establish and exhort you in your faith that no one be moved by these afflictions for you yourself know that we are destined for this. Now we we know, you know we read in John uh, in this world you have tribulation. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. You know Christian life is not you know uh, we we hear these messages in the in 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 Christendom or or or, uh, or in or in Christian Christian field. You know now once you get a believer you are not. I mean there are you are devoid of problems. You are devoid of tribulations and all these kinds of things. But we know a Christian life is not a life that is devoid of problems, devoid of trials, devoid of tribulations. But a Christian life is enjoying the peace of God as we go through the tribulations, as we go through trials, because God is near to us when we go through that. And nothing happens in our life without going uh, through the very heart of God. Without the, without the knowledge of God, nothing happens in our life. Now, Paul here was concerned or Paul wanted to remind the believers in Thessalonica uh, that tribulation is not a new thing. You know, once you get saved, once you are standing for the gospel, you are destined, you are, uh, you will have tribulation or you will have trials. And Paul wanted to remind them. And one of the things, one of the way that he wanted, one of the ways how he reminded them was sending Timothy, his spiritual son uh, to the believers too. Now, the purpose for Timothy was two things. Uh, we read that in verse two. First, to establish, and second, to exhort you in your faith. Now, we had to, uh, so we live in a world, we live in a cult, uh, we live in a society where, you know, or in Christendom, uh, where emphasis is given to encouragement. And there's no problem with that. We should encourage each other. We should build up each other. We should edify each other in faith. But here, Paul says there's an order of things. First is establishing in your faith, and second, encouraging in your faith. Now, if you, if you just encourage uh, uh, believers and not establish them in their faith, uh, you know, uh, we can encourage them in a wrong way. And one of the things is establishing them in, our, in, in faith, establishing uh, the believers in faith, establishing our fellow believers in faith, you know, uh, teaching them the, uh, the principles of God's word, teaching them the God's word, giving the word of God the, 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 the foremost or the highest priority. Uh, in our life, in our in our family life, in our church life, in our church, in our chapel, and then encouraging them to walk, uh, uh, walk uh, worthy of their calling, or walk uh, towards or close to the Lord Jesus. So the the purpose for Timothy was two things: one, establish them in their faith; second, encourage them in their faith. And and that is a vital thing. That's a critical thing that we first establish, first teach uh, uh, the principles of God's word. Teach. Uh, uh, what God want, God wants them to hear, and then encourage them in their walk. And when we come to verse four to four, four and five, we read, "For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were we were to suffer affliction, just as it has come to pass. Just as you know, for this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you, and our labor would be in vain." Now, if Paul could pray that prayer or Paul could say that, how much more could we say that? You know, 
even you know we can work uh, for years and years we can we can do many ministries we can do uh, building up our fellow believers uh, day after day but we also have to remind the other aspect of it is the tempter the satan the the, the one who is prowling like or walking around like a roaring lion is always always there to tempt us even us and our fellow believers uh, to fall uh, in their Christian faith. So how much more should we pray about them? How much more should we uh, cry to God for the, uh, for the, uh, for the growth or the, for the stability uh, uh, of our fellow believers and for ourselves? So Paul is, Paul is concerned that the tempter might tempt them and that their labor would be in vain. You know, one of the things as we gather together on Thursday night is, is because of that, you know, uh, we want to continuously bring uh, the chapel, the, the ministries, uh, the different things happening in the world before the Lord, uh, because Satan is there uh, trying to tempt, uh, trying to make others fall uh, and ultimately uh, bring, uh, uh, bring the labor into vain. So those are some of the things uh, that we can think from verse 17 from Chapter two, verse 17 to uh, three, six. And one of the most important things is verse 19 and 20. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus that is coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. The motivation of Paul to share the gospel. The motivation of Paul uh, to, um, to, to always pray for them. Uh, the concern that Paul had uh, uh, for the believers. I'll just leave uh, those thoughts uh, with you. And it's open for anyone to share or add to that.